that issue as well. All right, so up and change orders. Yeah. Six yeah. Okay. So unless anyone has um, specific comments on a, on a specific change order, I think the way we'll probably do this is just take a motion for uh, all of them collectively. So just one last time, any specific questions on an item? No? Okay. I, I'm going to share, I'm just going to disclose right now that um, I'm going to abstain from those change orders, and I just want to share my reasons so that you guys are aware of it. And part of it is um, I just don't feel that I have a good handle in terms of the impact on the financial overall uh, budget and the scheduling that these change orders um, are related to. So I don't know if that makes sense to you, Jason, but just from my perspective, I feel like we're Again, it's, it's an item that's come up before. We've sort of talked around and danced around it in multiple meetings before. But um, when it comes to these change orders, we get we get a number of them, which I understand is typical of projects, large projects. But I don't ha I don't feel that I have the right context of how each one <coughs> impacts our total budget and impacts our scheduling. Um, and, and having that big picture is critical for me. Well, these require five votes to pass. <laughs> Jason, yeah. Sorry. is there any consequence um, if these do not pass to their place on the August 8th agenda? You know, what, if there's any risk? I would say yes. Can you share what that risk would be to us? Um, specifically, so many of these the service gas line work, the right ones, would be a schedule and related issue. So item 9. Which one was the one you just referenced? Uh, it's right by change order 11. Power item 3. Item nine. Is, is, it, is it fair to say that if some of these don't get approved, you have an incomplete and non-functioning potential buildings on our yes, end? Yes. I mean, there's there's more than just a get. There is an impossibility of having a functioning facility. I think if some of these are not approved because of incomplete potential systems. That there's yeah, and, and so a lot of these errors and omissions probably categorize yeah. that as work that needs to be addressed. So, so I think what we try to do every time we discuss these is give you within the context of your overall budget where they align with the contingencies, so that you get a good idea of that. And I think that's fairly accurately discussed almost every Wednesday meeting. Um, that, that we actually have a conversation. <clears throat> I also think the schedule impacts are discussed in that we're still informing you that in our professional opinion, <clears throat> we're confident that your schedule is being met per the latest update that is, is provided and per our expertise as to where we're at in the project. <clears throat> that we do not see a significant impact of the schedule based on, on these items. So. I don't know what, what else it is that you, we can pro possibly provide to you to get you to not abstain and to vote, but I, I feel we've been fairly prompt with those discussions and updating you as, as often as anybody ever wanted. In fact, probably more frequently, and I, and I, and I respect you for that, than any other project in that we have these every Wednesday discussions. So I, I would hope, I'm somewhat surprised to hear that someone may not be totally up to speed because I, I, I think that it's been pretty, pretty transparent. So I, I think the, the unfortunate thing is if we don't approve some of them, I think we have a, a non-functioning facility, which concerns me, let alone a schedule impact that's of utmost concern. Because everybody has been busting their tail um, for a typical summer crunch, and, and, I, and, I, and I respect the contractors for, for doing what they've been doing. I hate to see that train come to a screeching halt, that's all. 
I appreciate that. I think, you know, thank you for your comments. I think a couple things. One is the Wednesday calls, I think, are great. Um, I unfortunately can't make those um, due to the work conference. So, um, you know, I appreciate the fact that you have those. But I think we've talked about this at many meetings at length about just sort of having this one pager. And I know we do this perhaps on the monthly, the monthly updates, you know, where you have the charts and you show the risk and, and, and all that. But I think where my concern comes in is that on multiple occasions there's been comments from, um, you know, other board members as well in terms of potential discrepancies and trying to get the numbers to match. And it's just hard for me to do my own diligence. My comment on that, I, I think those discrepancies are soft cost related, not construction related. Um, which we can try to address in the future, but as a discrepancy, they would be related to that, not change order related. Um, and I did issue a one page something maybe didn't get to you. Um, Are you talking about the one that we have here today? Uh, uh, this one here, Yeah. You were the area. That wasn't in the Friday. Friday. Um, yeah, no, okay. Yeah, Friday. June 30th. That was month. So, yeah, so that, yeah. that right. summary, so, so, the summary yeah. had been issued. So, here's my concern, right? So, that's not real time to me. So, June 30th, right? So, it's been almost a month. So, even if I go by the document you provided today. Well, let me stop right there. The executive summary is the payments that you The other one. Which is attached to every Wednesday phone call agenda that all the board members get is almost two days. Two days. Now, and that's this one is the 18th because I was on vacation, so I didn't get to adjust it until last week. Okay, so when we're talking about <clears throat> uh, right here, um, G and H, when we look at that financial state status? Yes. So maybe if you talk me through that a little bit. Um, so, yeah, that, so that. how much of the project is still pending so that we know how much of this contingency we have left to tap into? So I guess that's the perspective I'm missing as well, so, right? So g is the construction contingency when the project commenced was 4.15%, so $3.4 million. So I have a G on the hand that I had tonight. Um, I'm projecting right now, real time, about 1.55% of that is being spent. And that includes um, a, a value that I have an estimated in pending amounts. It also includes the six change orders that are on the agenda tonight. You, you, I just want to put on the record, Bob Curdy has joined me uh, via phone. Hey, Bob. <laughs> so, if all my pending estimate items risk assessment are executed, you spend one point two three three four hundred dollars in change orders a day. So, when I mentioned earlier that one point five five percent has hovered around the one point five number for the last four or five months. As to the stuff that you executed, the risk assessment items that I put in my log that are going to come down the track if I need to. So I have age, what's that? Right, and what's the percentage of the project that's completed? It depends how you look at it. The high school, um, I believe, is. About 35 to 40 percent. The middle school is up over 64 percent. So, how can I tell whether or not we're on track for having enough money in our contingency funds based on those percentages? That's a tough one to answer because we don't know what unforeseen items we're going to run into. Um, however, the risk on the middle school is dwindling every day. Um, because work's being completed and work's being put in place. 
right now, the volume of your work is at its peak with the middle school and the high school. It's going to start to go down, which hopefully less is the risk. The challenge there is you have two more additions that need to come out. I mean, I think, yeah, I, I mean, I'll just, when I pencil through, when I look at that, I mean, I, it, it, you had a $3.3 million contingency to get to an $82.87 million project. Then, you know, we have these change orders today, $1,233,000, you know, so that contingency reduces to the 206600 that's left here because it's now been distributed to these line items above. You know, and with 151,000 pen. Um, so, you know, the way I look at that is, you know, if I'm looking at a, a, a project here June 30th, I'm 65% done with my middle school, I'm 35, 36% done with my high school, and, and I've used about a million two thirty-three, and have two million left to finish 40% and 60%. You know. It, to me, and knowing that we, we have a little bit to come out of the ground, we still have to come out of the ground, which is where most of the risk is. Right. It, you know, it, it, I, I'm comfortable with that. I mean, everybody looks at this, and you know, those contingency numbers. I mean, when you're when you're budgeting that, doing it in you know, private industry every day, I mean, it, you you have to look at that money as you know, it's 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 spent. If you can save it, that's a big win. It, you know, but. There's so many unknowns. I mean, construction is such a difficult task, and, and, and you come across it, and particularly when you bring it new out of the ground and, and connecting it to existing, that, that's really, really difficult to, to, to account for everything. Um, I, I mean, I can tell you that I, I'm comfortable with it. I mean, I, that's all I can say. I, I mean, that's my own opinion, but. You know, I know these guys. I've, I've you know, the, the number of projects that I've you know, either been involved in in the past with PJ or you know, I've talked with other projects that have been going on. That's you know, right. That's, right. That's where I'm going to go with this. You have to base a lot of this confidence level on historical information and historical data. I think you are in a good position. We, we, your, your setup of your contingency was well established. It fell in line with historical data of other projects of similar fashion. I agree with your assessment of where you're at in, in, in relation to the percentage of work that's in place and what you have left. Keep in mind that that does not mean that we're just going to not continue to do our due diligence to continue to find cost savings measures to build that contingency or do what's right for the district every single day. But with that said, yes, there are other risks that are out there. And if I had 100% confidence level in telling you what I really felt about that was accurate, I certainly wouldn't be in this business. I'd be on the stock market somewhere making a lot more money. So I can only base that on our risk analysis on historical data, and, and we felt comfortable with the position that you're at right now. And we continue to pursue other cost savings items as we go through this. All right, well, thank you for that. I appreciate sure. that. Um, <clears throat> thanks for giving me insight. I think that was helpful. Um, all right, well, we're going to call for a vote. We're going to do a roll call vote. And <laughs> we did a motion and a second. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, we didn't. So let's do, we're going to do these collectively. So um, can I get a motion to approve item 6.3 through 6.7? Six oh, sorry, eight. Yep, yeah. 6.8. So moved. Mr. Kramer, no. Second. Second. Mr. Kaczynski. And then we'll do a roll call vote. Mrs. Murphy. Yeah. Mrs. Yeah. Murphy. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Kaczynski. Yes. Mrs. Patel. Uh, I'm, I'm still going to abstain. I appreciate the comments um, PJ did, uh, but on this one I'm just going to abstain. Mr. Chor, no. Chora. Mrs. Zelezny. Yes. Mr. Kramer. Yes. Mr. Kearney. Mr. Kearney, yes. 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 Five, one. Okay, motion carries. Motion carries. Five, five yeses, one, nine, one. All right. All right. Uh, Bob, we're going to move a couple of comments.